It's NBC 26 at 10. A Utah man is back in the U.S. after spending two years in a Venezuelan prison. Plus, with high temperatures back home, we'll have tips on keeping you safe for Memorial Day weekend. And a look at how people in the area are enjoying this holiday weekend as well. A Utah man is back home after being held in a Venezuelan prison for two years. Tonight, he was greeted by President Trump. NBC's White House correspondent Kelly O'Donnell has that story. A rush to freedom today from an airfield in Venezuela as an American Mormon missionary headed for a long-awaited flight home, accompanied by Senator Bob Corker, who helped broker the release of Joshua Holt and his wife, Tommy. The hurried exit ends two years of anguish. The Holts were held in a notorious Venezuelan prison where thousands of political prisoners are kept behind bars. A riot erupted there two weeks ago, and Holt begged for help on cell phone video. They're trying to break in. Uh, they're, they're saying that they want to kill me. The 26-year-old Utah man went to Venezuela in 2016 to get married. He and his wife were accused of stockpiling weapons at her family home and incarcerated without trial. Holt said he was innocent. I need your help to get me out of this place. In Utah, supporters rallied to raise awareness. Holt's mother, Lori. So it's been really hard. It's been tough. And you know, he's he's only 26 years old. He hasn't lived his life. Relations with Venezuela's socialist government are deeply strained. The U.S. imposed sanctions and labeled the re-election last week of President Maduro illegitimate. Maduro responded expelling two American diplomats. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo Thursday. We have an American there that we desperately want to get back, uh, Joshua Holt. Uh, and so know that we are engaged. As chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Corker went to Caracas and met Maduro yesterday. Today, President Trump was first to announce the breakthrough with tweets, calling Holt an American hostage who will be landing in D.C. this evening and be in the White House with his family. And preparations for a summit between President Trump and Kim Jong-un appear to be going ahead as the White House team heads to Singapore. The news broke after a surprise meet between North and South Korean leaders. These two leaders were blindsided by President Trump when he suddenly canceled his proposed summit with Kim Jong-un. There are questions, though, if the White House was warned in advance about the summit, who asked for it, and what was agreed. Well, it's a warm one today, but a few showers in the mix. Let's get a look at your forecast from meteorologist Gino Recchia. Gino. Yeah, Mo, it was a very steamy, hot day, even some showers and thunderstorms in parts of the area. Mostly it was just confined to Door County and Menominee County in the UP of Michigan. But now a few of us are seeing additional showers and storms popping up, none of which are severe. Earlier today, we had some gusty winds, hail the size of ping pong and balls in parts of the area. But now just a few scattered showers are popping up across the radar. This is where the heaviest of rainfall occurred last 24 hours. Radar estimations anywhere from about a, over an inch to as much as an, th near a half foot of rainfall. Now these are just radar estimates. They could be a little bit on the high side, but it gives you the idea of where the heaviest rainfall did occur. There even were some flood advisories because of the heavy showers and thunderstorms. For tonight, cooling down into the mid and upper 60s, and tomorrow, another hot one. I'll have that hot forecast coming up. All right, you know, thank you. And many in Northeast Wisconsin are breathing a sigh of relief as summer is finally here just in time for the holiday weekend, but with some warm temperatures also comes problems. Here's NBC 26's Max Grossfeld. At the Panthers Baseball Memorial Day Classic, many are relaxing and taking in America's pastime. It's really nice. We're tanning and we get to see some nice quality baseball and hang out with some friends and family. Northeast Wisconsin's nightmarish April is in the rearview mirror. Well, I tell you what, going from a blizzard a couple weeks ago to this is uh, quite a change, but we'll take it. It feels nice. There's a lot more to do outside. Yeah, and I like the warm weather better than all the snow and the cold that we've been having lately. But with this warm weather, Appleton Fire says the possibility of heat stroke and heat exhaustion becomes a real issue. Be cautious and monitor people because they're not used to it and we need to adapt to this weather. Firefighters say the best way to avoid heat related issues is to stay cool if you can and also to stay hydrated. When it's warm like this, uh, being from Wisconsin and the north, 
We uh, tend to sweat when the weather gets warm real quickly because we're not used to this temperature. So it's very important to replenish those fluids and make sure that you're staying on your hydration. Firefighters say alcohol contributes to dehydration. So if you have an adult beverage or two in the sun this weekend, they say be sure to drink a couple waters as well. Keeping you connected in Appleton, Max Grossfeld, NBC 26. And according to the Mayo Clinic, symptoms of heat stroke include dizziness, fatigue, and shallow breathing. They say if you do see someone experiencing these problems, get them water or call 911. And if you're cooking up or firing up the grill, the USDA wants to remind everyone to keep food safety in mind. The agency says more than 100,000 Americans suffer from food poisoning. They can be stopped, though. Experts say it's always good to keep perishable foods at 40 degrees or below to stop bacteria. Also, you should have two sets of cooking utensils, one for raw items and one for cooked. And speaking of food and the outdoors, thousands were in downtown Green Bay today for the farmer's market. They had 150 different vendors to choose from. It was also filled with local produce, handcrafted goods, live music, and even some free yoga. People say it's an atmosphere for everyone. Well, actually, we're like almost like a big family, actually. We all get along, and um, you meet a lot of great people. The customers are real friendly. And if you'd like to check one out, there's plenty more to see. They will be held on Saturdays from 7 to noon at South Washington, Doty, and Stewart Streets. A lot of action also going on in De Pere as well this weekend. The 28th annual Celebrate De Pere kicked off at Voyager Park. There's fun for the whole family, from inflatables and carnival rides to entertainments with musical headliners as well. Today, former KISS guitarist Ace Freely took the stage. But we've got lots of entertainment going on all day. Uh, two stages of entertainment running all day, including some of the top area local bands. Um, and then, of course, Kelly Pickler headlining. And if that name does sound familiar, Kelly Pickler is from the Pickler and Ben show that you see right here on NBC 26. Activities will continue on until Monday. Plenty to choose from. We'll be right back after the break with more news and weather. Stay with us. And now, your NBC 26 Storm Shield forecast with meteorologist Gino Recchia. It was a steamer out there. Temperatures in the 80s and 90s with dew points in the 60s. It was very muggy and it was extremely above average for this time of year. 92 in Green Bay, 93 in Clintonville, 94 in Wapaka. We're not even in June and we are seeing some record breaking heat. On Friday and also on Saturday, we have broken the records back in the 18 or 1978 for both uh, Friday and Saturday. 89 yesterday, 92 today. Now for the forecast, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, I'm going with highs tomorrow and Monday for Memorial Day on Monday in the 90s. Looks like Tuesday will start to cool off, so we'll end the streak of above uh, record breaking temperatures. But just take a look over the next seven days, we're going to be all above average. Our average highs for this time of year, they're supposed to be in the upper 60s and lower 70s. So if you're looking for any reprieve from the hot weather, we'll have to wait until towards Saturday to do so. Right now, 71 degrees winds have changed out of the north and northeast at about seven miles per hour. Part of the reason why we had an outflow boundary that came through from some of those kind of fading away thunderstorms that once they build up, they come crashing down and all that cool air escapes and move down southward. And we're actually tapping into some of that cooler weather. 71, like I mentioned, in Green Bay. 56 though in Kiwani in the upper 70s along the Fox River Valley. So a big range in temperatures right now compared to depending on where you're located and also wind flow pretty much variable all different directions off the lake along the lake shore out of the south and southwest of your father inland. Now we should start to see those winds subside tonight and change out of the west and southwest later overnight tonight. But for the meantime, with the scattered showers and thunderstorms, we're going to be having some variable wind directions for the time being. Thankfully, no severe weather. The, uh, the com or I should say the uh, showers and thunderstorms this afternoon were mostly confined over parts of the Northlands. 
where we had some heavier showers and thunderstorms, even some severe weather. Menominee County, Door County, they had some severe warnings. But now starting to see most of the areas start to quiet down with the coverage and the intensity of the severe thunderstorms. Hence why we're out of the marginal risk. This afternoon we did have a marginal risk of severe weather. Now zooming out, two systems have been promoting these showers and storms. Low pressure up to the north, down to the south. These are moving out of the area. We'll be in a quiet zone tomorrow before another risk of some light showers might move in here early on Monday for Memorial Day. But later in the afternoon we should start to clear out. For tonight, very quiet conditions and then for tomorrow it's going to be a sunny day and a very warm one as well. Watch these temperatures rise up into the upper 80s right about lunchtime and then into the lower 90s depending exactly when that cool air from the lakefront comes in, but I think we'll get into the 90s before that does so. For tonight, cooling down to 67 degrees. Storm should be ending by midnight or so. Then for tomorrow, rising up to 92. A very hot day. Once again, we'll be breaking records. Cooling back down into the mid 80s by Tuesday and Wednesday, but Monday, another warm one. If you really want that cool weather, take a look at it. By Saturday, we've dropped back down to 72 degrees. More comfortable and more seasonable for this time of year. So it was only about a month ago that we were looking out our window mode. We had two feet of snowfall and now we're going into 90s, 30 degrees above average. So what a swing in weather. Welcome to Wisconsin. Yeah, right? times change. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Gino. More news is ahead. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. He's 106 years old and the oldest surviving Pearl Harbor veteran. Ray Chavez traveled across the country from California to D.C. for the 150th Memorial Day ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery. He says this weekend he's focusing on those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Chavez was a quartermaster stationed in Pearl Harbor at the time of the attack on Hawaii, living there with his wife and oldest daughter. A funeral was held for a Wisconsin Marine killed in World War II 75 years ago. 26-year-old Eldon Grimm of Menasha was one of the Marines killed during the Battle of Tarawa in 1943. His remains were found and were matched with his niece's DNA. Today, he was buried with full military honors at Oak Hill Cemetery in Nina. You think about it, he was 24 years old. <laughs> it's hard to think about it. 24 years old, he gave his mom a hug and walked out the door. And for 75 years, he didn't come home. We got to get him home. And he's buried right next to his mother. 